Hi, my name is Jim Moyle, and today we're going to look at the configuration for <coughs> FSLogix profiles and office containers. We'll see, we're looking in our test VM here, and we've installed the FSLogix agent. We've had a reboot, although that's not strictly necessary, it is advised. And we can see that we don't have any profiles on here apart from the one I'm logged in as. Great. We'll first look at the two mandatory settings that we need for uh, FSO to work, both profiles and um, office container, which is the location of the storage to store the profiles and just the enable setting to turn it on and off. So now we've created those two settings in the registry. I don't care how you get these um, settings into the registry. You can uh, use preferences, you can bake them into the master image, you can uh, use the ADMX files that are provided in the download, you can use an environment management product. I don't mind. As long as the settings are in the registry, then we're all good. Enabled just turns uh, everything on or off. If it's set to one, it's on. If it's set to zero, it's off. Uh, VHD locations, this is set to the share that you have should have previously created um, should be an SMB share somewhere that's ready to store those profiles. Okay, we've logged on with a new user called FSLogix, and we'll now see in this uh, in your users directory um, two folders. One that says FSLogix. Now er the contents of this folder are all in the VHDX on the share. We'll also see the local underscore FSLogix directory. This is everything that is not being stored inside that disk and uh, will go away at log off. So now we've logged off our test account and we're back on our admin session. We can see that the user profile has gone from system. We can also see that there's no trace of the user folder on the um, file system. We can have a look on the share and we can see that we have a new folder that is the SID of the user and then underscore and the username which in this case is FSLogix. Inside that we can see we've got a VHD and it's 236 meg which is the size of that profile for that uh, test user. Um, the maximum size of this is uh, 30 gig approximately, but it's by default dynamically expanding. We'll go get into that bit in a little bit. Um, VHD locations, uh, you'll notice that says plural, but the type of um, um, the type, the value here, the value type is a single string. Now then, that can be actually a multi-string. Let's have a quick look at that. So we'll change this from a single string to a multiple string. So now we've changed it to a multi-string value. And let's have a look here. Um, I put a fake location in first and a real location second. Now what the agent will do is it will try and contact the first location. If that location is writable, it will create a new VHD in that location. If that first location does not exist or is not writable to, then it will time out from that location and go to the second location in the list and try the same test on that and so on and so on down the whole list. Let's see what that looks like when we log on our test user who will try and, and find a, a profile in that invalid path to start with. Okay, so we're logged on with our test user. We can see the two folders. Um, as we saw before for that user. So let's have a look what, what's happened. And to look what's happened, let's have a look at the logs. The logs are stored in program data, FSLogix logs, and underneath that we're going to look specifically at the profile log. If we look in the profile log, we can find the error. It says we couldn't find the path not exist. After that, we are going to then grab the path that does exist here and then we're going to attach the VHD. So let's log off from the test user and go back to our admin session. So that's all you need to know about the enabled and VHD locations settings. Let's move on.
The next setting we're going to look at is size in MBs, which is a D word value. And if you notice, we're going to create this in the office container location. This is equally applicable to profiles in Office as are all these uh, settings. And we're going to configure that as 10 to 4 0. So this is the maximum size that the VHD can grow to over time. The default setting for this is 30,000 MBs. Now, we've already created our profile container for our FS Logics user. Just have a quick look at that size. We'll remember this for later, which is 543 MBs. Now we've logged on with our test user, and we can see we've got inside their folder an Office virtual hard disk of 200 meg. Now we've got those two set up, let's switch back to our admin session and have a look at those. So now we're back on our admin session. Let's have a look at this uh, profile disk with the get disk image. And we can see we can actually pull the maximum size out of that. So let's put that maximum size in a variable, as we can see. And then let's divide that by 1 GB. And we get 29.3. Let's have a look at the office disk. So here we have the path to the office disk. And we can see the size there. Let's put that size in a variable. And we can see that's exactly 10 gigabytes in size. Perfect. So we can tell by PowerShell the maximum size of those VHDs. Okay, let's swap back to our test account again. So now we're on our test account and we're going to do something very foolish. We're going to copy the entire contents of the uh, Visual Studio folder from program files into my docs. This is a very large number of files and it's a very large size. As you can see, 5 point odd gig. All right, we'll just speed that up. Now that's finished copying, let's have a look at the disk. And we can see that disk has increased to almost 6 gig. To be expected, of course, because the documents folder lives in the profile, the profile lives in the disk, and that size has increased. Now I've done that, let's delete this folder from inside our documents folder. Okay, now that's deleted. Let's have another quick look at the size. And we can see that the VHD hasn't shrunk. Now, what do you think happens if we copy that data in a second time? Let's see. So, second copy done. Again, let's have a look at the size of this disk. Still 5.92 GB. Why am I showing you this? This is special when you copy files into a VHD. It reverses the usual Windows behavior of always writing data to an empty block rather than overwriting a block. Inside a VHD, Windows will overwrite a block rather than writing to a new empty space. 
because of this reversal of behavior, it means that um, dynamically expanding VHDs will not automatically reach 100%. They will remain at the high watermark of the maximum historical amount of data in that VHD. This is key for sizing because it gives you much more freedom to oversize these dynamically expanding disks because you're not going to automatically run up to 100% of all the disks over time. I like oversizing these disks. The reason being that it's terrible for a user if they run out of space in their profile or in their office container. They get very odd issues depending on what's the, what application or what time they're trying to write data when there's no space. And if you oversize, you know that the, the, that high watermark is actually space users need. So I much prefer to oversize these disks rather than try and finesse it to the minimum possible size. That is sizing MB setting and a little bit of help with sizing of the disks. So the next set setting we're looking at is volume type. And this determines whether you create a VHD or a VHDX for your profiles in your office containers. You can see that the um, existing profiles have got the .VHD. That's because VHD is the default. It's the default because it, it provides the widest amount of compatibility. Because you need a VHD rather than a VHDX if you're a Windows 7 or 2008 R2. Anything above that you can use VHDX. So let's create some VHDXs. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete our existing data and we're going to add volume type VHDX and let's just do this for the office data as well. All right, and we'll log on with our test user. So now we're logged on with our test user and we can see that we've got some new folders created. And let's just make sure we can see the file name extensions and now we've got a VHDX file. Let's double check that for the profile data as well. Perfect. So why is this important? So if you can, you should always choose VHDX. The reason for this is that you can shrink a VHD, sorry, you can shrink a VHDX, but you can't shrink a VHD. Now to do this, you need the Hyper-V PowerShell module, and there's a fair few steps involved, and it needs to be an offline job, but it is there and available to you if you've got a VHDX. Um, a couple of things about that Hyper-V module, you'll need to have the Hyper-V role installed on the OS that uh, that you're running the, the, the module from, which also requires the uh, the CPU virtualization features to be passed through if you're if you're sitting on a hypervisor. So unless you've got the pod, unless you may be using Windows 7 or 2008 or 2, and let's face it, we should all have got over off those two OSs by now, then you need pretty much in every occasion to reset or change this value from the default VHD to VHDX. Next setting we'll look at is flip-flop profile directory name. So if we have a look at our, our existing directory for our VHDs, we can see it's consisted of the SID and then an underscore and then the username. This is the same for both the office and the profile container or the directories that uh, hold those containers. Now this is fine, it's unique, it's globally unique. Um, so even if you have um, uh, multiple forests, etc., etc., where you could possibly have a, a username clash, having this in there might be useful. The trouble is, is that if you have a thousand or 10,000 of these, it then becomes hard to sort and hard to find things. So one of the settings that uh, most people use is this flip-flop 
profile directory name. D word, and we'll set it to one. And let's do it for the office container as well. Make things simple for ourselves, and we're just going to delete those. And now we'll log on again with our test user. So now we're logged on with our test user. And we can see that we have reversed the previous behavior. And it's now username underscore SID. Still globally unique folder name. But now you can sort based on the username and find the user's data that you need to find. So these settings we're going to look at is SID dear name match and SID dear name pattern. Pretty much these should always be configured together and they should never be configured with the uh, flip flop um, profile name setting. So let's have a quick look in the registry. We've already pre-configured these with all of the possible variables. Username, domain, SID, OS major, minor, OS build, blah, 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 blah. Um, key to this, I think, is profile version. So that uh, because FS Logics Profiles does not do profile version translation at all, uh, there are other software, there is other software available to do that. If you do have multiple profile versions and you do need to keep them separate, then you can very much use this variable to do that. We've configured it both for the uh, profiles and for the ODFC. Again, we don't have anything here, so let's log on with our test user and see what it looks like. So now we're logged on with the test user and we have got a frankly silly container name for that user. So username, user domain, SID, OS major, OS minor, OS build number, OS service pack, profile version, client name, and then there we go. See that the uh, VHX or VHD is still named the same. And let's see if it worked for our Office data as well. Yes, it worked for Office data as well. They don't have to be in this order. You don't have to use them all. Um, the most common setting is uh, that I've seen is that profile version to make sure that uh, you don't get any profile clash. Useful to know that they're there. Most people just use the, um, the flip-flop setting and they don't use these two settings and that's absolutely fine. Just don't use them together. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple of other things to note here and one is that it takes all the environment variables as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to log off our test user, we're going to delete these, and then we're going to try and use an environment variable. Back on our admin machine. Um, let's see what environment variables are available to me. Now, I haven't put any in here. These are just the um, default ones that I've got. So let's pick something relatively silly. Uh, let's pick processor revision. And I've already configured this here, so now we've got profit processor revision in our profile and ODFC path names. And we've cleared out our profiles and office data directories. As usual, let's log on with our test user. Test user logged on, and now we can see that is exactly what we expected the username and the current processor revision. Now this is useful more for when you've inserted environment variables into the OS at build and you want to capture those into the, um, the folder name for that user. Not a lot of people use that but it's nice to know it's there. 